<laughs> Run the other direction. I, I couldn't daven in certain shuls because it was I couldn't daven there. Because they're impacting you. They're giving you a vibe that you can't deal with for yourself. Right. Which is what the Baal Shem Tov says is whenever you see something else in the world that bothers you, you should know it's something wrong in yourself. Exactly. So if you have an atiyah to that thing, if you're like, wow, he's so invested in Hashem and making him happy, he's waiting for 106. And that's what you'd see. Right. So it's the difference between a guy going, it's always about to happen. It's to happen. Oh, it's and the guy going, oh, yeah. Now, if you're holding in that position, call yourself or even zealous whatever energy you put out will impact other people. I'm not going to be able to affect nine people who are all feeling. You think you're not, but of course you will. Call yourself or even zealous means that the same way in part of your body, if there's a something painful, it affects the whole body. Mm-hmm. And if someone rubs your back, your whole body gets relaxed, mm-hmm. right? If you are in a positive place, you bring simcha into the world. And everybody appreciates it. It's obvious. <clears throat> you got a guy who's in a bad mood. Right? Sitting at the Shabbos table. The whole mood of the Shabbos table changes. <clears throat> the guy who's in a great mood, he picks everybody up. No, if they don't care about him. You're right. So depending <clears throat> of the level of connection between two people, that's how much each other it impacts each other. Which is why you should have in the minion where you're connected to the people. Right? And then you, you, you put yourself in a good space. Even if you see someone in a bad space, you pick them up. That's why Chazal say, Kishot kishot Make yourself beautiful before you make other people beautiful. It's not just a, you know, a nice thing to do it because otherwise they'll look at you. It's actually a, a derech. By making wow. yourself beautiful, you will impact that you can now help him become beautiful. Right? You're a, you're a dogma. You put the energy out. That's what a tzaddik is. He's able to much be on people because he's real. He's like, look, this is awesome. You want this? Uh, just thinking on the... Uh, might be a little bit of a different point. But um, on the sever- severity of the, the punishments, they seem kind of... It seems very disproportionate. Yeah, so I'm like, I don't, I don't want in God, then in God is like, can like, send armies to slaughter my, me and my family, and it's, feel, it's like, really feels, you know, not... But he was just saying but, that's not uh, punishment. Right, no, so what I'm feeling is that, like, the, the chumrah, the punishment is just to show, because everything has ezo, like, edo, edo, like, you know, the good, the darkness, it's all, it's all really mewazan, it's all really mm-hmm. balanced, mm-hmm. so to show how... How bad the punishment is is just to show us how important. It's just to show us how see how bad that punishment was. Now you understand how important that. That's also true, it's good. but it's more than that. It's also atzmi. In other words, if you realize you kick Hashem out of the world, okay, a world that Hashem is not in sucks. He's blocked. It's, it's a natural thing that just he's not right. there. Then. The, it's yeah. like if you, if you have, a, have an amazing a, a light in the room, okay? And then you take, you know, dark cloth and you put it on the light and you complain why it's dark. And then not only that, right? If you have a, a neighborhood where there's, um, you take all the chef out of the neighborhood, make everybody poor, okay? Like Harlem. And then you wonder why people are murdering each other. I mean, duh, right? So if you take Hashem out of the world, then what happens is, Countries fight for control, power, kill, kill each other, right? You're going to be the one who you're not going to have, you're going to be poor. And then people are going to be, want to, you're weak and poor, they're going to want to abuse you and take you, right? The human traffickers always run after the kids who are from poor families, broken families. Always. Because you can feed on the weak and they don't talk and, they, and then they don't have any expectations any other way. Right? So the bad people in the world, if you, Hashem leaves the, these people and they're, they're poor, like, right? A dirty Jew, right? Who's in the ghettos. He's an easy target. Natural progression. You take Hashem out of the world, this is what happens. We put Hashem in the world, take Hashem out of the world. That's what he's t- teaching us. You do this, I do this. You do this, I do this. I react according to you. And when he reacts by pulling himself out there, oh boy, bad. 
But it's not like this. It's like a, a fact. Hashem leaves the world. It sucks. That's why I gave you the muscle of the woman getting kicked out of her house. If you get, you live on the street, you're going to get sick. Someone's going to rape you. Because that's what happens on the street. So if you destroy my house, okay, you kick me out of the house. We don't have a house anymore. Okay? Now you're homeless. Then you know what's going to happen? All the things that happen in the ghetto. What happened? I mean, I, what happened in Europe that brought us to that? Because, like, it's hard for me to explain. Like, everyone says that we don't really talk about the Holocaust. Why happened? Because it's just be honest. That's Stussen. Stussen. Stussen Why? I think that's, that's because the, the Torah says very clearly why things happen. But then it's like we're judging. Oh, Vadi Yosef, who didn't go through the Holocaust, which is why he's able to say it, because everyone else was traumatized, he says anybody who says we don't know what happened in the Holocaust is called for Bikola Tarakul. Yeah, but there's a place over there. Right, because he's still going to read. <laughs> read. Read. It's like someone came to Amman Yitzchak and he said, I, I don't believe in, in the Torah. You know why? Because the Holocaust. So he opened up a Chumash and read. What do you mean you don't believe in the Torah? The Torah said it's going to happen, and it happens. But those it's people, more reason to believe in the Torah. I'm sorry, but there were so many Siddiqim that died in the Holocaust. So, so many good people died mm-hmm. in the Holocaust. They, they weren't doing this. Okay, so now you're asking a different question. Yeah. When there's a tzaddik in a generation, there's a, a lot of bad people. Okay? That's just tzaddik. It's a lot of innocent young yeah, children. Forget it's like or it's or children. children. Women, children. Women, innocent, women, innocent people. There's a lot of innocent people and there's a lot of bad people. Was that? Yes, was yes, that yes. Go read the Chavetz Chaim at the Midos that were going on over there. Yes, there was very, very bad Midos. Very bad. Really? They were... Um, torturing Almanas and Yusomim. Yeah. yeah, that was going on. Yeah, seriously. The grandfather was there. The breakdown of the family started there. Right. Right. Apikorsis is a way of destroying the, the, the Torah world. A real fight. Lies, stealing, cheating. I don't know, but I would assume since the generational... It happens generationally, and it happens lefachos in the time of 50 years ago. I would assume there's a lot of sexual abuse also. We'll just assume that. But you hear about the story of the little boy who went to get tefillin and risked his life to bring it to his father, and then as he's running back, boom, he gets headshot. He's dead. Mm-hmm. What the heck did that boy do? You know yeah. who said that? Mm-hmm. Alicia ben Abuya. That's why he came fry. Right? Okay. He's like, I don't understand the system. Okay, but you, you have to have, it's a long system, okay? Golas is to come to fix not only what happened in Europe, but also what happened in Bayesheni. We went to Golas because of all these things, Sina Skina, right? So now these are processes for us to, te- to fix this stuff. So you have to look at the whole process. But you can't be an idiot and pretend there was nothing bad. There was bad stuff, and he expected you to see it and fix it, because otherwise, money And there was ability for people to fix things that they didn't, or else it wouldn't have happened. I think the reason people, a lot of people say, like you know, we don't understand why the Holocaust happened is because it's so bad and it's such a horrible thing that happened. And like when we start explaining things, it's like we're like actually judging. Right. Our Jewish brothers and that's not okay. And like, that's you know, not that's okay. That's why she died because she probably did that. And like you're judging people. Right. right. You know why? So that's that's why we're not doing that. Why can't you judge somebody else? Because you don't know anything if you don't know. Because some people say you don't know anything. Right? Now I have a question. Because mm-hmm. I'll say, if you see a serum come on you, uh, come on you you're my posh bitch for myself. Right. Wait, I don't know anything. You have to check yourself. Right? So, what does the word my self mean in that sentence? Your actions? My. Actions. Or my self. Yeah. My self. Meaning that I am supposed to know what's relevant to me. Uh-huh. If I start deciding what's relevant to you, right, I'm going to 100% rob. Because I have no idea. That's the problem. 
The problem is when we decide what's magia la ploni, without, there's no way you can know ploni. Right? Well, we're saying that that's why, why they died. But the I know, I know that my responsibility is that if there's Almanas and Yasomim, right, I'm one of the people who went through the Holocaust. For me to say, nah, 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 everything's fine, I don't deserve this. Look around in your life, look around in your world, was it going well? You have a responsibility for that. Did you do anything about it? If they would sit down, everyone would make Cheshvan and Nefesh in Europe, and they would come, they would say, what's going on in my life? Would they have nothing to say? No, they for sure have a lot to say. And they would say, you know what they would say? They'd probably say the things that are written in this portion. Because the Torah is accurate. So, so how do we know this truth that it happened because of all, because they actually did this, without judging them? And saying, you know what I mean? Like, it has to be, you know that nothing happens at the Chinam. It's a belief system. That you have to know. The details of exactly how it works on your business, because it's not for you. Yeah, we know Klalim are not Pratim. But a person has the ability to know Pratim in their life because it's relevant to them. And by the way, it's not the only reason it happened. Even a person with Pash Pesh from and he gets something, he learns something from that, you're superficial if you think that's the only reason it happened. There's a hundred million reasons why things happen. But there's also a lean wood for you in this thing, and that you can impact by doing that. Which is why things happen in the world we don't understand, like Rabbi Akiva. If Rabbi Akiva would have been Pashwish for myself, he wouldn't have come up with anything. That's what the Chazal said. The Malachim said, Why does he deserve this? And there was no so answer. Was there was no answer. Who was the one that said that? Malachim. The Malachim said that. Right. It means they couldn't find anything in Schaiva Onish that should have caused that. And, what was the answer and not only that, it says that by Moshe Rabbeinu, you asked about um, going to, into, into Eretz Yisrael, right? So Chazal say, Nora Alila. Hashem is Nora, and he makes Alili, Alila, which means like, like a, a fake, uh, he, 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 he fooled it, he, tried, he pretended that he did something wrong. The proof is, what did Aaron do? What did Miriam do? How come they're not in Eretz Yisrael? They're one of that? Where is Aaron buried? Har Nevo. Where is that? Har Nevo, sorry. Oh, I also added the, like, in the Sinai. I think it's Sinai. No, not in the Sinai, it's in, uh, it's in Jordan. Jordan. In Jordan? No, we can't go visit him. Yeah, the people go. People go? Yeah. People think they know where it's But what does that mean? Yeah. That means Hashem had a different reason besides what he wrote. There's what to learn from what he wrote. But there's another hundred reasons why it's also true. You said that everything happens for a reason, and it's clear that Torah why the Holocaust happened, so people shouldn't say, uh, we don't know. Right. However, Moshe would not ask the same question, why do bad things happen to good people? And Hashem said, I can't answer you. Right. Because he just said, look at Baruch Goisai, Moshe, what do you mean? He's talking about a person, like Rabbi Akiva, who you can't, with Cheshwet and Nefesh, come and do anything wrong. And there's still bad things that happen to those people. But Moshe Rabbeinu should say bad. There's no bad Moshe, don't you know that? That's his told... question. No, but Moshe Rabbeinu is asking the question. That's his question. How could it be good? That's he's asking. No, but it, it is good. He doesn't understand how. In the Shem say Shtok or something? Yes. Yeah. Why? Um, that he didn't say Shtok. He said. Um, There's something like that. He's like, you can't. Uh, uh, it's pun. It's pun. Uh, you can't see my face. You can see me achora. You can understand it a little bit, but not really. Which means the language is more gavoa than the understanding that Moshe Rabbeinu was holding at that point. What does it mean that he showed in the back of his tefillin that Hashem walked past him and Moshe saw the back of his tefillin? Before we get to the tefillin, what does it mean pun and, and achor? It's a better question. Right. Uh, when you see the back of someone, you don't get an intimate relationship with them. You don't see where they're going. You see that they're going. You don't see where they're going because you don't see their kivun. Uh-huh. Right? So you, 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 there's a relationship of some sort. Right? But you don't get their kavana. Mm-hmm. You think they're not going towards you. So you can get something. You can get an image. Mm-hmm. But you can't get the kavana, the pnim. What does it mean he had tefillin? What does it mean B'chal Hashem has tefillin? We'll learn more about tefillin, we'll probably understand that. But, again, let's be misakim, because when we get the whole point, right. th- there's two huge 
limudim in this week's parsha. Limud number one. The way it's structured is im im, which means he never intended to use force, never intended to use onesh, punishment, as forcing a topic. He said, like, you can do whatever you want. Number two, he's telling you about our relationship. He's saying, you have a huge impact on me. And therefore, if you bring me into the world, you're going to have things that look like incredible shefa because I'm in the world. And if you push me out of the world, the world's going to suck. Because when I'm out of the world, the world sucks. You know what I just noticed? In the positive way, it says, When he says the negative side, he says, He misses out. He doesn't say, He doesn't say, there's three things in the positive, but in the negative, it's only two. Why? Why does he skip out the first one? Because you don't have, it's not the relationship to Bukhos it's the way. So if you don't do what's going to happen is not that you mess up the relationship, it's just that you will end up messing the relationship up. Because if you're not on all the Torah, you'll be impacted by your bet midos. See, the main thing is the tigal nafshen, nafshen. Well, it's a shlav. First of all, don't listen. I'm going to answer his question, and we get to yeah. your question, right? He, the question was, he's saying, in the, in the first step, he's saying the recipe for success. Right? Right. And then he's telling you what is disastrous. Now, if you don't own in your mitos, you haven't yet messed the relationship up. The relationship up happens when lotish muli. But, he's telling you in the first part, by the way, the sod... The missing element, the reason you got here, was because you didn't omel, and therefore you were pulled by all kinds of negative mitos, and then you end up not listening, and you end up not doing, and then there is a natural progression which happens that people start being nimas. Uh-huh. Now, why does that happen? Take a look at Svaradim and Ashkenazim, right? So Svaradim, don't do mitzvahs. But as soon as Yom Tov comes, they'll put on a kippah and, you know, do stuff. They're connected. I want to do mitzvahs. Kasheli. This different person is like, I don't want to do this. I'm not doing this. I refuse. It's bad. That person ends up hating in the end. To fight. That makes negativity. But is it true that this generation are all tinnot so technically anyone who's doing it, even the haches, it's only, it's an emotional thing. It's not because they're... The Chazonish used the term because he was interested in halach definitions. So he was looking for where the Torah speaks about the concept of onus. Okay? The reason why people need that is because they look at the Torah in the superficial form of did you do it or you not do it? If you didn't do it, I have to give you a dispensation based on some rule. That's why he used that terminology. Okay? If you're deeper than that, which means you understand the whole purpose of the world is development of Midos, and the actions are just development of the Midos, mm-hmm. then you, you ask yourself a question, what is motivating him not to do it? What is motivating him? Yes, to do it. And then suddenly everything changes. Because the reason why the Mida behind, why he's not keeping Shabbos, not because he doesn't keep Shabbos, he actually keeps Shabbos. He thinks that's not Shabbos. So he actually, his Mida is Shabbos. He's not an Ones. He's Ratzon to keep Shabbos, and that's stupid. And you have another person who doesn't want to keep Shabbos, doesn't care about Shabbos. But he's scared, so he's going to do it anyway. Right? How much development is hidden Midos did he have? So when you start learning Kanimiya Satora, you don't have to look at it in those halachic definitions anymore because that's just an expression of something deeper. It's true. Of course it's a Tinok Shanishva. Because he actually thinks you're stupid. The Radvaz says in Tshuva that the definition of a person who is um, called an Ones is how are the people around him who keep Torah and Mitzvahs. If they're jerks, then of course not to keep Torah and Mitzvahs. And if they aren't, then he'll be impacted to keep Torah and Mitzvahs. That's a deeper way of describing the same process. Right? You can't expect people to believe in Torah. Mm-hmm. Like, you, know, you go home and tell your wife, um, 
we have to do a mitzvah like this. She says, why? And you say, because it says in She says, so what? Rabbi Yosef Karo. She's like, I don't know who that is. I know who you are. Why are we doing this? Is it important to you? It's not important to me. It's God. It's important to God. I love God. It's important to him. Right? You ever had that conversation before? So if you're, you go to Beis Yaakov, then you get, you get that broken out of you and you salute. But if you didn't go to Beis Yaakov, you're like, why are we doing this? It doesn't have any meaning. And we have a stupid husband that says, we have to do this. And he freaks the hell out of her and she does it anyway. Right? But if you have a good relationship, it's like, oh, you don't want to do this? Okay, well, let me explain it to you. This is why it's important to me. And I think it's important to Hashem also. So if you, you, what do you, what do you think about that? Is it good for your relationship with Hashem? You know what? I see it. I, I, I want to be close to Hashem. I'm going to do it. Right? So I don't, I don't like the concept of Tinoch Shanish, but I think it's superficial. You're saying it's like a, it's almost like a get out of jail free card because don't worry, you're not going to get punished so bad because you're a Tinoch Shanish, but you know, I'll say it to you in a different message. Okay? This one, I saw this one video of a father who was clearly his Yiddishkeit was so not compelling that I can tell in five seconds looking at it, okay? And then he says, at first I was super upset at my son and I kicked him out of the house, but then I realized he's an oinus! <laughs> so I brought him back into the house. How's that feel? And there's no relationship there. You don't get him, you know, you're not, it's like, you really, you have these categories in your mind. If he did not there, we kick him out. If he's an ornest, then we can put him in, right? That's what, that's what, if you draw and learn dry halacha, that's what, that's, that's what will happen. That's what halacha is. Yes. No, that's a decision to look at halacha like that. Halacha it's like, be with. it's like, it exactly, a perfect muscle, okay? Your wife tells you, 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 you tell your wife you want to eat certain foods, okay? So she does it like halacha, mm -hmm. okay? So she puts olives in there. Right. Or she learns it to understand how you tick. What's good? What do you like? And she wants to have an experience of you. And she wants to make you happy. Right? So not only does she understand how you like food, but she figures out all kinds of things about you. Right? So it's beyond halacha. Halacha is showing the person. If I give you, if you can have a marriage based on two people having a partnership, that they each one does certain roles for each other, which is a very superficial marriage, or you can have a marriage where people are actually connecting to each other, right? Sharing ideas, sharing feelings, um, expressing with Sonos because it's something very important to me because this is who I am, right? That's the difference between Pnimi Satora and Nigla Satora. So you're gonna have all kinds of concepts that if you put them in boxes, they mean something. But if you understand the meaning of it, it means something totally different. Right, so do you, do you actually think that a chiloni, Hashem is upset at a chiloni for not keeping Shabbos? Let's just be like in the relationship. Right? If you told your wife to do something and she thought it was the stupidest thing in the world and meant nothing to you. Right? It was just a dry, just do this. Why? Just because. Because I said so. Think, you, think she would do it? No. She wouldn't do it. Would you be upset at her? If you're a mefager, you're upset at her. If you're a controlling bastard, then you're upset at her. Right? So people think Hashem is a controlling bastard. So it's like, you didn't listen to me. But he, she wants to be close to you. She doesn't want to clap. Like, give me, give me what is, what's the reason behind it? That's a much deeper way of understanding. So, but now, so the Neshma sounds like, I don't need to know why you want it. I'm going to do it. That sounds like... Uh... Really? Is that what it sounds like? So why isn't just Nasa? Later, I'll understand it. Why? Which, Why? Because I do want to understand. Of course. I'm trusting you now because I want a relationship and I, I don't have the Caitlin to understand. So I'm very invested. But of course, I want, I want Nishma. I want to hear you. I want to understand you. But I'm not putting the Nishma before the Nasa. The Chiddush was the Higdimu. It wasn't right. Nasa without Nishma. That's totally off. Right, right, right. I'll only do till I understand, till I feel it. Right, so that's a relationship. But lacks trust. That's right, exactly. Yeah. You could do that. It's like, I don't, I don't, I'm not willing to do this until I really get it. You, you're, there's a relationship like that. It's, it's black. But you don't trust the person, obviously, because maybe they'll come up with something which is stupid. And you're like, no, 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 I, I thought about it and I don't agree. But if you're totally trusting the person, I'm sure I'll figure out why it's good for me. So you'll do it.
Okay, so I want to know what you learned from all this. Haha. -ha. <laughs> that was long. That was long. I got some good stuff though. The reason I invested so much time in it, even though I knocked these guys out, was yeah, because this is the critical uh, change in a person's um, view of God depends on this. Now, if you grew up with parents who treated you the other way, if they wanted to control you, and they used punishment and reward as a way of controlling you, right? And they didn't show you that the relationship depends on that, then you will have a very difficult time understanding this until you actually put effort and energy into it. Do you think that's how I, Father? You don't care, why not? What? No, I was just joking. Right. Um, in between, I would say. Sometimes I don't know. It's like that. Of some stuff is like that, some stuff is like that. Some stuff is like that, some stuff is like that. That's a human being. It's a growth process. That's normal. <laughs> This is one of my biggest struggles in parenting. I want something. Do it. Do it. People are talking in Shalom Shalom Aleichem. Stop talking. Right? If you don't stop talking, I'm going to walk away from the table. You know what? It really makes me happy. <clears throat> When, we, when, when I'm singing Shabbat Aleichem, you guys are participating. First of all, because it makes a beautiful environment in Shabbos. And second of all, because it's really meaningful to me that you care about something that's important to me. And when you don't talk, when you talk in Shabbat Aleichem, it makes me feel like what thing is important to me is not important to you. And it makes me feel like there's no Shabbos over here because the part that really is meaningful to me in Shabbos is being blocked out by all this noise. Now, what do you think the kids are going to do? Continue talking. <laughs> That's true. Right? He would. And why? Why would he do that? Because <laughs> he doesn't care. Okay. Well, that's a very clear relationship. Oh, you don't care about me. Now, if a kid doesn't care about you. So now I'm going to take away his phone. So no, no. I'm not going to take away his phone. But he, when he, when he asks you now. things, you're going to say, listen, you, you obviously don't care about this relationship. Okay, so I don't feel like investing in this relationship. Right, so I'll take away your phone. You don't yeah. have to take away your phone. You can say when he wants me to connect me, he has to get. Right. So when he wants something from you that's important to him, right. you will treat him like he treated you. So he'll understand you put the relationship like this. This is the way it is. You're teaching him. I really would like to give it to you, but since you decided that we're, you're, you're making a relationship with me, that you don't care about what's important to me, then I also won't care what's important to you because that's matim to the relationship you created. And he's going to be like, wow, that hurts. My father doesn't care what's important to me. Right, because you don't care what's important to him. And that's what's correct. Now what's he going to do? So if he's tantruming, he'll say, you don't care about me, you don't love me, you just love me, I can't believe you don't care about me. If he's mature, he'll say, oh, I see, okay, so you know what? It's worth it for me to care about him. Makes an amazing relationship. Maybe you can talk about the doubt of that. But if he still doesn't care about you, you have to wonder if you're showing him you care about him. Because if you care about somebody, it's natural and normal when it's me caring about you. That's why the first thing you check in a marriage when a woman doesn't want to give to her husband is like, okay, what are you doing? That was a brave question you asked. So I'm going to turn this off because I don't know if that should be on film or not.